Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Emily from Raven Relics, and I am extra, extra happy today because I get to reveal this mammoth journal to you, finally. This is my Marie Antoinette themed keepsake journal. It is a journal that I have been dreaming of probably since middle school, honestly, but a very long time. Um, and I finally took the dream in my head and just took the plunge, made it a reality. This is what I came out with, and it is epic. <laughs> I love it. I'm in love with it. It's going to take us quite a while to get through it. I do not want this video to be nine hours long, so let's just get started. This book was meant to be thick, but I did not know it was going to be this thick. <laughs> it is ridiculously thick. Um, it has the standard 200 pages for the base of the text block, but then I added, I, I couldn't even tell you, I don't even know how many little papers and patterned paper and different things that I added. So all together, I'd say that the total amount of writing space probably, if you were to, you know, compile it all into just regular sheets of the 50 pound drawing paper, it would probably be over 300 pages. Um, I haven't weighed it yet. <laughs> I don't know how much it weighs, but it is also the narrowest book. It's the thickest and the narrowest book I've ever made. It is five inches wide by 11 inches long, give or take, you know, a centimeter. And the color scheme is baby blue, baby pink, and gold. So there are actually two different corner protectors. You can see these are a little bit a little bit more rounded on the front and the ones on the back are flatter and a little bit more I don't know like floral um, I put the flat ones on the back so that it would you know lay flat in theory um, this is baby pink sari silk ribbon that I got from a shop on Etsy and obviously I had to have the Marie Antoinette signature in the book plate I looked up how she used to write her name, and she did the A rounded, kind of like this. So that's why I chose the font. You can see all the coffee stains. Here is a close-up of the spine. Coptic stitch. Nice, neat rose. All right. Uh, same drill in terms of you know, the the bones of the book, Professional Bookbinders Board for the Covers, Archival Grade Adhesive, 100% Irish Linen Waxed Thread, and then 50 pound drawing paper for the text block. All right, let's do this. I don't even know if I'm all the way in frame. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, I, I know it's a tight squeeze to put this whole book in here, but this is what I got to work with. Okay. Ta-da! Inside we have gold damask end papers, a pink and blue curtain tuck spot, and all kinds of things in the pocket. Of course, we have a little Marie Antoinette picture. This is an old map of Paris, a pink envelope, and a kind of bluish turquoise um, damask bookmark. Here's a little tuck spot with a beautiful nature scene. Again, pink and blue. I'm not going to take literally everything out of the pockets because this video <laughs> would be way too long. Um, but I'll take out some of the, you know, more flashy things, I suppose. Here's a little teeny baby coffee dyed envelope and it unfolds a lot, even more than that. So usually when I make baby mini envelopes like this, I do like to make them very long like that. And then we have our first of many, many, many gold paper clips, all gold paper clips in this book. Here's a digital image of just, I don't know, a very festive scene. I love the detail of that ribbon colors are perfect and it's just blank on the other side um i forgot to mention that uh also every single sheet of paper 
and every single envelope, journaling card, all the things are coffee dyed with baking soda so that the acidity is reduced. Here is a super cool image of Marie Antoinette. I posted it on Instagram. I freaked out when I saw this image. It was too perfect. And this is a sheet of some vellum with a damask pattern that was already on it. I bought it like this and then just coffee dyed it. And here's our first real journaling page, I suppose. Um, and just look at all the stains. I'll try not to obsess over the stains because it just makes everything take longer. But I just want to make sure that you guys can see how beautiful they are. I mean, when you see this in real life, I feel like it makes much more of an impact. The stains are, they're just so beautiful. Uh, Candelabra stamp. This is the first of two sheets of um, paper that I printed specifically for this book. There is a chandelier stamp at the top. And despite the book being ridiculously thick, because it's Coptic stitch, it still lays totally flat. So, you know, even though there's a little bit of an incline on this side, and eventually there will be on this side, I can still easily write on the paper. That's the beautiful thing about Coptic stitch. Just a little image I glued down. Other side of that coffee dyed vellum, ship stamp, tuck spot. This is just, you know, French ephemera. Here's another little tuck spot with another cutest baby envelope. Here are a couple of journaling cards. This one is very cool. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There is some French down there. It is technically a French advertisement. And then this is just a big, big old tag. Border stamp. This is a uh, piece of paper with some excerpts of Romeo and Juliet. I'm getting a phone call from New Jersey now. Okay, I just declined it. I don't know who you are. <laughs> anyway, um, this image you guys have seen before. Uh, uh, this is just a really pretty angel. Um, kind of kind of esoteric-y. Anything that looks mystical, esoteric, symbolic, I am all over that. This is a cute little flip out with a shield stamp. Very cool little banner, digital image. Other side of that blue paper, other side of the uh, Romeo and Juliet. This is a digital stamp I used in my last French book as well. And this is also my often used astrology chart. I basically just look for the grungiest piece of paper out of the entire batch of paper that I dyed. And I always print this out on that piece of paper. It just looks very, very old to me. So it should be on old paper. I think it looks so cool. All right, another gold paper clip, obviously. Here is some aqua blue striped paper, a bunch of stuff in the pockets. Um, this is the, yep, there it is. This is the first of a few cranberry colored seahorses. I um, haven't yet used my cranberry ink pad yet, and I thought this would be a good time to do that. And I just, oh, I love it. I want more colors now. <laughs> um, more journaling cards, you know, pretty, pretty things. This is a real vintage playing card from the 60s. I think my journals in general are kind of balanced between being more masculine than feminine. 
Um, that balance seems to happen on its own. I don't really gravitate towards super, super frilly. I don't gravitate towards, you know, super, super clean lines. It's right in the middle, but I intentionally tried to make this book as feminine as possible. Um, beautiful, beautiful blue paper. I don't remember the kit off the top of my head. Everything's listed in my Etsy shop in the description box. Uh, a piano stamp. This is just a little pocket. Um, envelope and another big tag. Map paper. There we go. It's so thick. This is like, <laughs> it's literally blocking out the light. I'm trying to squish it down. All right. All right, 10 minutes in. We're making decent time. Here is another stamp you guys will recognize. I just folded the sides up on this big piece of parchment paper, but I sewed the bottom, oh, let's see if I can get this, <laughs> I sewed the bottom little part up, so this is like a little pocket now. Other side of the map paper, other side of that beautiful paper, I just want a wall of that wallpaper in my bedroom. If I could, I would. Stains. And then this is kind of the more, I guess, masculine section or two, uh, going more strongly with like the golds and the reds here, just kind of an ode to the Sun King, you know, Versailles in general. I can't you know, make a journal with a Marie Antoinette theme and not think of the Sun King or just Versailles as well. So I was thinking of Louis the Fourteenth when I did these sections. It's the Fourteenth, right? I don't know. I majored in French. I actually did my, you know, 50 whatever page um, thesis all in French on Versailles. <laughs> Uh, so it kind of makes a little bit more sense now why I love French and Damask designs in my journals. Amongst other things, I love Celtic and Gothic and other things too, but this is a big side envelope, side pocket, or side envelope, side pocket with an envelope, and I will not open the envelope, but there's a couple little pieces of treasure, I suppose you could say, inside of the envelope for whoever buys it. Pretty red frame. Some burnt edges on the paper. This is a really pretty image. I don't know where it came from. I think it was just free online. And then this opens up and there's some ledger paper tucked in there. Okay. You've seen this before too, image of an angel, and envelope, journaling card, stamp. Some of the journaling cards and envelopes have stamps on them, some do not. This image is so beautiful. It's like an old children's book illustration, um, but the colors, I don't know, they're so vivid. Um, I love that image. And then here's a big big envelope made out of this um, cardstock from the antiquity pack that I showed you guys I think a couple vid videos ago or maybe it was just on Instagram <laughs> I can't keep Instagram and YouTube straight castle stamp and then here's an upper tuck spot with just a little something something in there so you see it this is actually uh, the perfect pocket shape for a little piece of paper or even just, you know, at, on any corner of any page. So you could use this as a bookmark or you could take a little bit of glue and have yourself another little pocket wherever you want. Here's a close up of the castle. Vellum, a bunch of things in that pocket. This is a real piece of French music paper from the 1800s. 
big tag, big Paris chandelier card. One of many little French uh, book covers. And then on the other side, it's just another big digital image. Sometimes the way that the coffee dyed paper looks is just so pretty, it's hard for me to like cut it up into smaller bits. So I just like printing huge images. So I have an excuse to use the whole thing. I'm obsessed with coffee dyed paper, in case you didn't know. Here's a cute little tuck spot made out of a fun treehouse type image and a couple fun things in there. Everything is pretty much French related, you know, Damask themed in some way, shape or form. This is an old um, tea advertisement actually. And this reminds me, when I first saw this stamp, it sparked a little bit of inspiration in me, and I think I am going to make an entire journal based off of just the inspiration that I got from this stamp. Um, I have other, I'll just give you another close up. I have other images ready to go. I think I know what I'm gonna do, but it's a really, really nice forest green color and it's just unique. So I wanna run with that. Here is another digital image of a gypsy lady and a beautiful blue envelope shell stamp at the bottom. More gold paper clips. All the gold paper clips. Stains. Little tuck spot. A couple fun things in there. Another tuck spot. French postcard, Eiffel Tower, and this is a pink street map of Paris. I don't know if this is going to show up at all, but that's technically what it is. It's a pretty pink map. Castle with a snake stamp. This is also a map, but it is a beautiful gray and white color. I left this piece of patterned paper as well as I think one more blank on at least one side because, you know, I just want you to be able to put things down on it if you like. It's also just really pretty as is. It's light enough that you could even write over it with a black pen. I try not to fall into the trap of thinking that I literally need like a pocket and five million things on every single page. Super cool stains at the top of this lined paper. Big pocket, big journaling card, and I don't know if you can tell, yes you can, there are lines on this journaling card too. Candelabra stamp. There's a bunch of these cards that I've used before. Oops, there we go. Little Versailles, you know, 17th, 18th century themed journal cards. Tree stamp. Owl stamp. Other side of the pattern, or the lined paper. This was so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Another digital image that made me freak out with joy. And you all know who that is. There's a map back there. There's another one of those little wreath um, images that I glued down to the corner of a page towards the beginning. And a, a Iron Gate stamp. That's the word. Other side of that gray map paper. Pink map paper. Little um, clock stamp. This folds open, and then we have a pocket filled with a bunch of different things. More little baby journaling cards. Book covers. Here's another tuck spot with more Versailles-esque images. Let's 
same thing. I won't take everything out of the pocket. I'll just give you a, a close up. And there's that pretty, pretty red seahorse again. Aqua graph paper or ledger paper, I guess. Here's another big envelope that is not paper clipped down. It's just um, over the edge like that. I didn't want to cover up the aqua. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes like the colors of pattern paper are just too pretty as they are and I don't want to mess with it. Here's another big fold out page with another big digital image that I just printed on a whole piece of paper. Another treehouse image. Upper tuck spot, envelope, and another curtain image. This was uh, like a little country cottage, and I assume that most people know, but maybe you don't know, but Marie Antoinette built herself basically a little village on the grounds of Versailles, so she actually loved being in the little cottages more than she did the palace. Cool, the digital image. Although I'm sure she loved being in the palace too. I mean, there's that ship stamp again. More map paper. Another tree stamp from the same place, obviously. I think it's Graphics Fairy. A big tuck spot with another envelope. I love the striped paper. Hopefully the lighting is okay. Yeah, there we go. Here's a little man being pulled along by a horse. Castle stamp again. Another big, big tag. Journaling card. Pretty pocket. This is Tim Holtz cardstock. Now these next few pieces of paper are absolutely divine in terms of stains. Oh, let's start with this page. So first just a couple little speckles. The huge and then this is another really dark piece of paper like the one I printed that astrology chart on. Statue, digital image, all the stains. Yeah, so beautiful, beautiful. If every single page could come out just like that, oh my gosh. Gold paper clip, which means another big fold out image. This one is actually double sided. On this side, we have the blueprint of a manor house, all in French. And then the other side is the manor house. At least that was my thinking. That's what my imagination decided. These two images actually did not come together. <laughs> all right, I'll worry about that later. Uh, there's that chandelier stamp again with a little water damage. So the color's peeking through. Here's another one of those big Baroque images. There was one piece of paper way back in the first signature. I don't know if you remember. Fold out. Stamp. Other side. Speckly stains. So cool, so pretty. Gargoyle stamp down at the bottom there. More aqua ledger paper, an upper tuck spot this time. With an image you guys have seen before. The zodiac signs, there we go. The zodiac signs correlated to the body parts that they rule. Pretty little floral card. Ah, yes. Uh, another map. There's lots of maps in here. 
This side, I glued the edges down so it's actually a pocket. And here's a nice big card. Um, this was the same paper I used to make a pocket a few pages back. And then this side I left as a page that turns with a tuck spot or a little fold out on the back and another journaling card I just tucked in there. Another gold paper clip holding down a big image of Joan of Arc. I won't take it out and unfold it. Um, another little pocket. Book covers that I actually left connected so they open like a little book. Here's uh, another one of those little pockets. Remember I showed you, I stuck the other one of these in an actual pocket so you could glue it down just like this um, if you wanted to. Fun little things in here. Shield stamp at the top. Big blue ornate frame. And that is it. Here's the stains on the back page, my maker's mark, here's the nameplate this book belongs to with some stains, of course, and that is it. Oh my goodness. Okay, we are at 26 and a half minutes. Not too bad. I am going to wrap it up right here. Where's my sorry silk? Here we go. So just pretend. Pretend I tied it again. <laughs> okay, guys. So I can't believe that this project is over. I worked on it for like a week and a half straight. It took me so long every single day. So many hours of hard work. I'm ecstatic that I finally made it happen. It's going to go up in my Etsy shop tomorrow, um, which I believe is March 20th, 2019. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. I'm going to announce it on my Instagram when it does go live in my shop. And all the links are in the description box down below as usual. If you enjoyed this flip through of this massive book, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and I will see you next time, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!